So we're on a whale watch um, trip. We happened to have the BBC out with us on a um, charter trip. So it was just uh, a few people, Nancy Black and Mike Merlo, the deckhand, and myself and the crew on the boat. And we were out looking for killer whales. They really wanted to see killer whales, but humpback whales too. We've been filming humpback whales. And then we got a call at about, well, was it 12.05 from um, John on the, uh, on the sea wolf that they had found killer whales attacking a gray whale on the calf. So we headed over there because that's really what they wanted to see. And this is a day that there was over a hundred humpback whales feeding, surface feeding on um, krill. They were everywhere. They were lunging. We barely saw any flukes trying to ID the whales, but it was an amazing, flat, calm, beautiful day. It took us a while to get there. We got there about half an hour. So we got there at 12.35 and we saw a uh, several killer whales going after a mother calf gray whale and the calf was being pushed into the air somewhat and you could see blood in the mouth and the, there were a couple humpback whales, two humpback whales that were in the mix and they were trumpet blowing and they were tail slashing and I took uh, still pictures at first trying to capture as much as I could and try to ID the animals and then pull up my video camera and 12.38 so last time we ever saw the calf that was the end, it, it died already and the killer whales stayed there and the mom stayed around for about 15 minutes. What was really interesting is the humpback whale was diving down with the mother. The mother would die down right where the calf disappeared. Then the humpback whale would go right after her. And they would both like be underwater, it seemed to us kind of looking for the calf, looking for the calf. The killer whales sort of backed off and the killer whales came in too. And the mom left after about 15 minutes and took off. It had kind of toward shore. So we stayed there um, expecting to watch killer whales feeding and we had ten kill, about 10 killer whales there at the time and we saw humpbacks stick around. And so we're documenting this and the humpbacks are vocalizing and they're trumpet blowing or bellowing and slashing their flippers and slashing their flukes uh, very loud very, and facing the killer whales and following the killer whales around saw a few other humpbacks and they came in too. So over a, week, a period of seven hours, we stayed on the scene and the humpbacks didn't leave. In fact, we saw more and more coming in and saw as many as seven at one time. But later when I analyzed the photos, it was at least 16 different humpback whales. And that's just identified by their flukes. And there were additional ones that didn't fluke. So there was more than that that stuck around. One was there for at least three and a half hours, and several were whales that we had seen in the morning several hours earlier and several miles away that moved into this area. And there was a lot of food around, but it was very interesting that the humpbacks didn't feed. There was only one feeding bout the entire time, seven hours, and we were there. We only le we left at 10 after 7 because it was dark. We couldn't see anymore. And one time, four whales came up. They did a quick uh, feeding lunge, and then they went right back and do um, side by side, touching each other, facing the killer whales, trumpeting, um, approaching them, following them around. Really interesting interactions. Killer whales were um, feeding on the calf and uh, oil slick spread and I noticed uh, another group of killer whales around uh, Chopfin or Stubby's group. Had, um, they were there. He wasn't at all involved in any part of the attack or the feeding. Kind of stayed off. And the group he hangs out with is a group we call Jagged. Um, young female, she w would go over there with her mom and, and her siblings and hang out with them for a while and come back and feed. In fact, she seemed to do most of the active feeding and we had albatross. We had dozens of albatross around and we had um, black men and shearwaters so they were feeding on the blubber. So it was very noisy and just trying to record all these interesting interactions, which whale is feeding, who's interacting with the humpbacks, who's the humpback that's coming in recognizing a few of the humpbacks in the field. Uh, it was astonishing and not just because the humpbacks were interfering or seemed to be trying to interfere with killer whales during the hunt, but that after the calf was dead for seven hours, they stuck around. So if you say that it was because they're trying to, they may have been attacked as a kid, 
they're trying to protect a calf, there were no calves around. Um, the, the ideas that we came up with just didn't seem to make sense. They seemed to be protecting the carcass and didn't want the killer whales to have anything to do with the carcass at all. Because one would, this killer whale would start feeding and a humpback would come up and start chumping at it and slashing all over the place. So um, it was hard to kind of pull herself away because we never, it was extraordinary. And this actually led to, um, we'd been talking to Bob Pittman, a colleague who was pulling together accounts of humpback whales interfering, I mean, with killer whales feeding on different species, and we'd already contributed sightings, and we said, it was supposed to be the end to collect the paper, and we said, you need to add this. This was a unique encounter. You know, seven hours, lots of humpbacks, nonstop, and when we left, when it was dark, they were still multiple humpbacks in the area, and they were still just as boisterous and following the killer whales around, and the killer whales were still feeding on the carcass. So, quite amazing, and it actually became a major focus for the scientific publication that came out in Marine Mammal Science was this, because it was the longest documented encounter of interaction, and it was involving the most individual humpback whales, too. So that's what happened here, and it was just an amazing day when we talk about altruism why in the world could they have been doing this? So fascinating, shocking, um, awesome.